Hello and welcome everyone to week five of writing Wikipedia articles. Uh, this week we have a panel, uh, much like we did last week, except this time we have uh, several people with expertise in open educational resources and related areas. So last week we heard from people whose background was primarily in Wikipedia, and this week we're going to get to dive into a specific topic area and take a look at several Wikipedia articles and uh, and have some suggestions and some discussion about what it might take to improve those articles. So I think we may have some overlap uh, between articles that are talked about today and articles that you've chosen for your uh, for your final project. Um, but if not, uh, we'll also be looking at articles that may have some some similar issues. And the hope here is that this will be a good uh, uh, that it'll stimulate some ideas uh, of what you can do in your articles. Um, ordinarily, I like to start class off by checking in on where people are with their with their projects. Uh, and I know there has been excellent work going on on Wikipedia. People have been bringing things up on the class discussion page, um, and we've had some some talk about everything from how to add a pronunciation key to an article uh, and how to do basic formatting to uh, what constitute good sources. Uh, and we've had uh, we ha we had an article recently. Uh, published for the first time on FET, uh, which is a, an initiative out of the University of Colorado Boulder uh, that does uh, simulations for uh, physics and chemistry classes, and worked through uh, one iteration where uh, the author submitted that and it wasn't accepted and then went back and added a bunch of citations and just published it herself. So anyway, there's good work going on. Uh, we're not going to take the time to go through specific questions uh, today because we want to make sure and make the most of our panelists. But please do continue using that course discussion page and please attend uh, our lab session on Thursday if you're in the Western Hemisphere or Friday uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere uh, and we can dig in in more depth. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in and introduce our first guest. Uh, we're going to have four guests today. The first of them is Wayne McIntosh. Uh, Wayne is the founder of a site called Wiki Educator, which you may or may not have encountered. Uh, this is it's it's based on the same software as Wikipedia, uh, but this is a site that's designed to support educators in uh, in developing educational resources. So it's really it's an enjoyable wiki. It has a, a very different culture, a lot in, in common, but also a very different culture from Wikipedia. It's uh, it's it's much more freeform and possible to work on your your own projects without having to worry about whether you're complying with uh, with rules and regulations. Uh, Wayne also is the founding director of the OER Foundation, which supports uh, work in in the OER field. And uh, his, I, I believe, current biggest project is the OER University, which is uh, an effort to develop curriculum and uh, and work with established universities around the world that will uh, support the teaching of open educational resources and practices. So, uh, Wayne, uh, I, I hope you have some interesting thoughts to share about some Wikipedia articles or some some background about how your work connects with Wikipedia. So, take it away. Sure, Pete. Um, a big thank you for the invitation. Um, if somebody could just put up their hands up if you can hear my audio, so I can check if my audio is coming through okay. Yeah, that's, that sounds good. Um, you know, as Pete said, um, my day job is working for the Open Education Resource Foundation, which is an independent nonprofit entity which provides networking, leadership, and support to education institutions around the world to achieve their strategic objectives using uh, open education approaches. I guess at this point I should clarify that the acronym OER Foundation refers to Open Education uh, Resource Foundation as opposed to Open Educational Resources. And I, I think that's an important differentiation which would uh, impact on the authoring of articles around openness in education. Um, we use the concept of open education as an umbrella term, which encompasses uh, you know multiple dimensions of openness, including OERs, open educational resources, open education practices, uh, open uh, policy, open source, 
So the various, uh, you know, and open learning, so the various dimensions of openness in education all fall under this larger umbrella concept of open education and, and hence, you know, you know, why we call ourselves the Open Education Foundation. As um, Pete said, we uh, run two flagship initiatives, uh, with the Wiki Educator Project, which is a collaboration of uh, over 60,000 educators worldwide working at the heart of the education endeavor, which is really to share knowledge freely. And as Pete mentioned, our uh, community has a slightly different culture to Wikipedia. Uh, it's a more senior audience. 72% uh, of our members are either uh, teachers, uh, educators, or trainers working in the formal education sector. Our um, average age, uh, about you know, half of our participants are over 45 years old, which was actually quite surprising to us when, you know, when we started the project. Uh, as you know, we were expecting you know the web geeks, so to speak, you know, to be participating in the project. But uh, the project really just reflects the age demographic of you know the the, the formal uh, teaching profession. Our other initiative, of course, is the uh, OER University collaboration, uh, which is an innovation partnership of universities, colleges, and polytechnics from all continents who are using OER uh, or developing courses based entirely on OER uh, to provide free learning opportunities uh, for all students worldwide. Um, and uh, with uh, pathways to achieving formal academic credit. Um, so, um, so basically, how the system will work is we will be building courses entirely on uh, using uh, OERs, and uh, learners from wherever they are in the world will be able to study for free. And uh, sh should they require uh, formal assessment services, they'll be able to approach any one of the anchor partners uh, for those credentialing services, and uh, to, you know, towards getting credible degrees. So that's basically uh, what we do, and um, you know, just a, I, maybe just two reflections, and then I'll I'll stop there because I think it's going to be more productive if we engage in some discourse and, and questions and sharing of ideas. Uh, and this relates to one of the articles which the, you know your project is working on, uh, relating to the, the massive open online courses. Uh, and, and, and of interest, we the, the Wiki Educator project back in 2007 actually launched uh, an open online course, and it, it was quite distinctive back in those years because uh, you know all the materials were developed openly and collaboratively using a wiki model. They were entirely based on OER. We provided free access uh, to these learning opportunities, uh, which predated the first MOOC, so to speak, by some 12 months, and I mean, I'm sitting wondering uh, about the the typology, if you will, of you know the different articles we're developing on open education, uh, and you know it might be a productive exercise to actually think about the typology, and you know, and using open education as this umbrella concept, and then also the concept of open online courses, which is really the, an umbrella of MOOCs. Um, MOOCs is, is, is a subset of um, you know a, a range of initiatives that are happening on the open web. But I thought I, I thought I'd, I'd leave it there, and um, hopefully, if there are any questions, and um, it would be great you know to share some ideas. Okay. Well, thank you for that, Wayne. Uh, that's great. So let's move on to uh, to our next. Panelist, and uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to move through these and have 15 or 20 minutes for questions and discussion at the end. So I think um, probably everyone will be thinking of some some good questions in the meantime, and uh, and maybe we can look at uh, Wikipedia articles about Wiki Educator or the OER Foundation, which I don't think has one yet. Um, but maybe we can uh, brainstorm a little about what it might take to improve and update articles like that. Uh, or anything else in uh, Wayne's expertise is, is very broad, so uh, let's think of some good questions for him. Um, also, I want to mention before we move on to our next speaker 
uh, who's going to be Lisa. Um, we have uh, an Etherpad, as everyone uh, hopefully remembers. Uh, let's let's post that in the chat window because our panelists may not have the the link handy. Um, but for anyone who wants to post links um, or any notes to accompany their presentations, please feel free to join our students uh, in the Etherpad session. And also feel free to uh, to just organize the notes and uh, and contribute to them as we move along. We tend to be pre pretty free flowing with that. Um, so let me move on to our next panelist. Uh, Lisa McLaughlin comes to us from ISKME and OER Commons. Uh, she she directs OER Commons, which and and um, ISKME's OER technical services team. Uh, she's been working with OER since 2008, uh, and she got her start with Open Michigan, which is an initiative at the University of Mich Michigan. Um, and OER Commons, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, is a, an excellent uh, repository of open educational resources and a, a place for people to uh, find and mix and match uh, resources to produce things for their classes. So uh, Lisa, why don't you uh, take it away and tell us what you think of Wikipedia's coverage of OER. Uh, and you may need to click the talk button in the audio video section section that should be in the upper left of your screen. Okay, can people hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Pete. Thanks so much for asking me to join this conversation. I just uh, got caught up to speed with your last session. It was a really interesting discussion uh, about the Open Educational Resources article. Um, so I guess to give a brief overview of, of my history, yes, I started um, my exposure to OER um, in graduate school. Uh, I was studying information science at the University of Michigan, and I got involved with a group of students that were putting together a learner-centric uh, digital scribe model for students to um, sort of transcribe their courses and turn them into OER um, called Open Michigan. Can people still hear me? I'm seeing this waiting for application sharing to start message. Yes, we can hear you. That's, uh, okay. that's my error. OK. Uh, um, pull up the, the, the website, uh, either OER Commons or the Wikipedia article about it, if you'd like. Um, oh, awesome. Great. Um, so yeah, that was how I first became exposed to the field and got involved in the process of thinking through um, OER on the publishing side and sort of how you create a movement um, within um, higher ed to get students involved in the practice of um, turning courses into OER. Um, and then sort of I can give a brief overview of my work at ISKME. So ISKME stands for the Institute for the Study of Knowledge Management and Education. And we work in OER on a couple of levels. We've done quite a lot of research on OER historically. Uh, we started in 2002 and became involved in OER more explicitly um, in 2007. So we were a very early um, entity and sort of mover in the space. Our first work was through the Hewlett Foundation, um, a project to create OER Commons, um, which initially the vision was that we would sort of go out and collect all the OER that existed <laughs> on the web. Um, so at the time, that meant sort of having a research lens on who the Hewlett Foundation was funding in the OER space and keeping track of um, early OER uh, that was being created in a library. Um, and over the years, that's developed quite a bit. And now uh, OER Commons, we think of ourselves more as a network uh, for OER today than a library um, because there's been a shift as, as we've curated over time the massive amounts of OER that exist today. Um, there's a big focus now on quality of OER and I think that's, that's one thing that uh, is interesting to cover and think about in the Open Educational Resource article. It's definitely um, one of the debates going on as OER sort of comes into the mainstream the big question and some of the big pushback from publishers in, in, uh, in the space um, is that OER is sort of fragmented, it's too modular, it's uh, a very, you know, has varying levels of quality. Um, and so a lot of our work 
at OER Commons in the past couple of years has been focused on that question and thinking about tools uh, that can be applied to OER workflows and collaborative learning processes that can be applied to OER to sort of meet that quality question. Um, I think it's going to be one of the big questions that faces the field as it, as it becomes more prominent. Um, so I think that's one interesting area to think about on the open educational resources article is that debate, um, along with a debate that was touched upon last time around sort of the question of how OER is defined in the different camps um, around that definition. So it's it's really interesting to see uh, one conversation I had recently with someone. Um, about that, those debates heating up around the definition itself of OER um, was focused on the idea that that was a real sign that a field was sort of reaching um, maturity uh, when you start to really see uh, fragmentation in the field or start to see camps um, emerging, that that shows that really something is coming into its own, uh, which is really exciting to see. And so in our role at OER Commons, we've tried to sort of remain semi-agnostic in terms of our curation strategy. So we've curated um, a range of OER. So from, uh, we look for content that's CC BY, that's, a, you know, the most open license that's out there. Um, but we also curate content that has a range of um, Creative Commons licenses within the Commons to sort of showcase the range of what's out there. Um, and our recent curation work has been really focused on the K-12 space and sort of how that um, is beginning to develop and, and become uh, a bigger piece of the OER world than it has been historically. Uh, so that was touched upon too a little bit last time around policies that might would might be interesting to add around um, K-12 domestic education, um, grant initiatives through the Department of Education that could be added to the policy section. Um, I think it's also useful um, in terms of thinking about sources for these pages, uh, just in the process of thinking about being on this panel, I went back through uh, several Google Docs that I have around different handbooks and OER courses and guides that have been out there over the years. Um, uh, Pete had shared a, a guide last time, it looks like in the session, um, which is one that we had curated in OER Commons. Um, but I can think of 12 or 13 other courses and guides that have existed um, over the past couple of years around OER. I know there was one in Connections, there's one in Curriki. Maybe you already have those in your Etherpad. Um, but I'd be happy to share those, um, what we've got in terms of uh, educational, you know, OER guides that um, we've curated in the Commons. Because um, I know there's quite, quite a few, and those would be good sources. Um, in terms of thinking about this content. Um, in terms of what else we have at INSCME that might be useful, we, through the research side of our organization, we, we did a number of OER case studies early on that might be listen, interesting to look at um, for some more historical reference um, that I can share. Um, and also an interesting source would be uh, looking at sort of events, uh, big field events. So every year the William, the Hewlett Foundation puts on an OER grantees meeting, um, which brings together a lot of thought leaders in the field. Um, and there's almost always a site, a wiki somewhere by the entity that's hosting that event um, that sort of tells you who's there, shares um, uh, what's going on, sort of the latest um, on you know, how Hewlett is thinking about the field. And that might be an interesting source just in looking at um, sort of who's been there over the years if you're trying to think about uh, organizations that might not be represented um, in the summary on the OER page. I know there's a lot of the big groups are there. Um, some smaller initiatives might be missing that that are really promising and interesting that show up at, the, at those meetings. Um, I guess I'm sort of jumping all over the place. But those are my initial thoughts. Uh, about things that, you know, might be helpful to develop or, or um, tools that students could think about or look at when they're looking at enhancing these articles. Certainly our own article on OER Commons is rather updated. It's a little embarrassing. I looked at it. And, um, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work in the last uh, year or so on this uh, OER publishing environment, Open Author, which um, is one of the coolest things we've got going on, it's got a lot of focus on inclusive design, it's got a lot of very um, cool, you know, in 
accessibility bells and whistles to it, which is sort of our way of dealing with um, one of the quality issue complaints around OER that I discussed, um, the, this idea that um, basically OER is in this, you know, less than polished format. And um, when you get it, you know, you're going to have to do all these things to actually put together something that's ready for students or ready for teachers. Um, and so we built this authoring environment that has uh, sort of cutting edge accessibility features to sort of say, well, actually, we can make these OER environments so that they have a lot of things that, um, you know, traditional uh, commercial providers aren't providing at all in terms of, um, you know, platform accessibility. And that was one of our ways of working on that. But we haven't had time or, or thought at all about adding that to our, our page, mostly just um, out of busyness. But we'd be happy to have people look at uh, sort of our latest initiatives and um, enhance our page. We'd love for feedback on, on what we have so far. Um, you know, another interesting area that I, I don't know if it has been touched upon in our article around our work is um, we, we're doing a lot of work now on internationalization of OER and looking at workflows for translating OER into, you know, across languages. We have an OER Commons Arabic project that we, I don't think we've shared on our site either. Um, but but is really our attempt to sort of dive into the issues of how do you create OER communities across the globe um, and deal with some of the translation issues that come up. Um, and so there was an interesting recent um, uh, mention by Hillary Clinton of the sort of promise of open educational resources before she left her position at the State Department. Um, and that's another interesting area where um, we're starting to see a lot of interest in internationalization of OER and sort of the role that OER can play in building global communities. Um, and that's not something that I really see yet on, on uh, the articles explicitly. OK, I think I've, I've said enough. <laughs> OK, well, thank you so much, Lisa. That's, uh, you really you covered a lot of ground there. And I think we'll have lots, lots to follow up on in the Q&A session. Uh, I've seen in the chat window there's, there's definitely some interest in capturing some of those resources uh, that could be used as reference material for the OER article that you mentioned. Uh, if you're able to add some of those to the Etherpad or, uh, you know, mention them in the chat window, maybe even as we're approaching the discussion session later in the, uh, later in the class period. Uh, yeah, I'll do that now. Big help. Great. Uh, and and several of our students, uh, Christine Bush especially, uh, has put a lot of work into the uh, the OER article, and uh, I would imagine uh, Christine may have some questions or comments about that, uh, or anyone else in the class who's been working on that article. So thank you very much. That's of course the most uh, the article of the greatest interest to our Communicate OER project and to many of our students. So I really appreciate all the comments on that. So uh, next we will be hearing, let's see, I, so next we'll be hearing from John Vandenberg. Uh, John is the president of Wikimedia Australia, uh, and he has been involved in open source software development uh, for quite some time. Uh, he's worked on a lot of projects that you've probably heard of, like uh, the Mozilla web browser, uh, which preceded Firefox. Um, the uh, Apache Portable Runtime, OpenOffice, and Bugzilla. Um, and then in 2006, he became interested in open content and started working on Wikipedia and the sister sites, uh, Wikimedia Commons, which uh, hopefully you've all encountered by now, which is the media repository that supports Wikipedia and other related projects, uh, and also Wikisource, which we've encountered a couple of times. So uh, John, I, I think is, he's also a, uh, he's a, re a researcher at the University of New England in Australia. Uh, and I think his, his work has taken him uh, closer to open educational resources as a field. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think he's going to talk to us today about uh, OER policy development in Indonesia, uh, which is something that I think is a, a bit far afield from anything that we've discussed so far, but I am really fascinated to hear about. Uh, and we've, we have, uh, I think, in, in many ways, we end up really with a, a heavily Western perspective uh, when we're working on Wikipedia, because a lot of the participation is from 
the U.S. and Australia and Great Britain on English Wikipedia. So it's there's there's always such a strong desire to balance that out and uh, make sure that we're representing things in a way that reflects the entire world and speaks to the entire world. So I think this will be a topic that, that really speaks to that. So take it away, John. Hello, can everyone hear me? Uh, we can hear you, but there's uh, you may want to turn your mic level down a little bit because it sounds okay. a little distorted. Radio, is that a little bit better? Yes, it is. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I do have a background in computer science, that's where I started, um, and I've moved into research management. I'm not actually a researcher myself, um, I'm more involved in the uh, administration of research as my day job. And uh, as uh, was mentioned, uh, about 2006 I started getting involved in um, Wikipedia, Wikisource, these types of projects of uh, crowdsourcing, and um, became more interested also in the administration of these projects, uh, so it was a very interesting mix of day and night job of uh, administrating research during the day and then going home and basically doing the exact same thing. Um, and it has brought me into the OER world um, and I just want to talk about uh, two things that I've been involved in, um, it is something that's more recent in my life. Um, in 2012 I started organising a uh, language camp in Indonesia and uh, I'll, I'll provide the URL for that page as it is now. And I'll just put that in the chat window. Um, and we decided we're going to include OER as one of our objectives um, for that session. And uh, the other stream was languages. Uh, the reason was that um, we were obviously looking at Wikimedia projects and they have a very uh, strong uh, crossover with OER. Uh, resources, and we're wanting to involve universities in these projects. Um, now, I've um, recently um, become married to the uh, um, the head of the uh, organisation of Wik uh, Wikimedia Indonesia, um, who was also the uh, funder of Creative Commons Indonesia. As a result, I knew a little bit about what they were doing over there, and one of the um, Major changes that has uh, happened in uh, OER in Indonesia happened last year in 2012. Before 2012, it was actually illegal for a university to do OER. And it might come as a, a fairly big shock to most people. Um, the concept of actually being a legality issue uh, is just not something that most of us would think was possible. Uh, the actual sharing um, or doing distance education, um, all these types of concepts were just not uh, allowed for um, the universities over there. It's quite a different environment there. They've got a lot of universities. Um, some of them are more polytechnic than what we would consider universities from um, you know, people in uh, UK, uh, US, Australia, Canada, as there is a, a, a difference in the level of education provided uh, in a lot of them, also a difference in the, the way they um, prov provide education. But with the uh, enormous numbers of, of uh, open education resources becoming available to them, they're starting to want to include them and use them. Um, obviously, they have to translate them. Um, so Creative Commons Indonesia um, started reform uh, processes for the, the laws in Indonesia. And in 2012, that was finally changed. A very minor change was really all that was required. Um, but now Creative Commons and uh, OER are now uh, legal. Um, in Australia, um, just this year, we've had our first uh, conference for Wikimedia in Higher Education. I'll also uh, provide the URL for that. It was uh, hosted at the University of Sydney, which is one of our uh, what we call sandstone universities, one of the very first universities in um, Australia. Um, and their buildings are all sandstone, which is why we call them that, as opposed to the newer universities which have been built um, uh, in more recent times, the last um, 80, 100 years. With, and they're not all sandstone as a result. Um, this conference, we're mostly looking at uh, examples of higher education. When we first proposed this conference, uh, it was one particular person at the University of Sydney who had run a uh, Wikimedia or Wikipedia in um, uh, her classroom, and she wasn't aware of anyone else doing it, didn't know what else was happening in this space in Australia. 
Um, by the time that the symposium was actually underway, uh, there were four or five other people at the University of Sydney that were also coming out of the woodworks saying they're doing the exact same thing, maybe in different ways, but they're also using the media. We then started looking at the legal issues um, for an Australian institution with their duty of care um, involving students on the public website where everything is uh, visible, it's very hard to get pages taken down. Um, some of the academics were talking about uh, the, the odd cases that arose and how they handled ensuring that their students, uh, the rights of their students were upheld. Um, in some cases they had to actually modify the way they are structuring their uh, courseware to ensure that the students had the option of not using a, uh, a Wikipedia or other wiki uh, on a public space and some other way of actually providing the material for assessment. So the two main um, cases where I've been involved in OER and I expect it will, uh, will grow over time. Um, the Australian Symposium was the first of many. There are um, people in other institutions now that want to run the exact same event um, at their institution, bringing more local people uh, to their university and talking about uh, what they've been doing in the space. But one of the things I'd like to talk about, as uh, was mentioned, is uh, adding more information about other countries, especially uh, Asia, um, but any country that um, isn't mentioned so far in these articles. Uh, there's nearly always a um, Creative Commons organization that's um, a local organization in each country. Philippines has one, Taiwan has one. So every country in Asia, at least that I know of, and I'm sure elsewhere in the world, uh, has their own organization. And these are all active doing something. So they're wonderful resources. Uh, if you go and talk to the Creative Commons um, institution in the Philippines, no doubt they'll be able to tell you about what's happening in their country in this space, uh, about their own organization, what their own activities are, but also the activities of other uh, organizations in their country. So we see on the uh, display here that uh, South Korea is mentioned. Uh, as far as I know, that's the only one that's given any real space. Um, but all of the, uh, the countries in this area all have uh, their own activities that are, uh, that are ongoing. Which probably they could all have their own article, but uh, probably suitable to put uh, minor, uh, well, small paragraphs about each of these organizations in the, in the main Creative Commons article. Um, another way to uh, add content is to, for example, look at the articles that have already been translated. So if we go to Open Education Resources, we'll see on the sidebar there is a, uh, a list of, I'm just waiting for it to come up, there is a list of languages over on the left hand side. And two that uh, might stand out, they're definitely the longest names on that list, is uh, Bahasa Indonesia and um, Beso uh, Minang Kabao. The Indonesian article was created at that language camp, or actually I think it was the week prior, um, and that logo, um, someone might want to correct me, I think that was the previous logo that was internationally used for OER. Uh, that was translated, um, they created a new logo, and that was put up on a banner at uh, that uh, Lang camp um, symposium at uh, the University of Indonesia. Uh, the banner, which was um, two metres by two metres or something of the sort, ended up being stolen. Uh, I'm sure it's being put to good use in Indonesia somewhere. Um, we'll have to get another one made for the next conference we do there. Um, or we'll find the one that uh, we actually made and hopefully it is being uh, used effectively. Um, at the end of that article, we can see the uh, there is a reference there to the law that was actually changed. That's our second reference. Um, so if you throw this into Google Translate or similar tools, um, there's a, a good paragraph there that can be used to um, add to, the, um, to an English article to describe what's actually happening in Indonesia. Um, and the same, I don't think that the PDF is going to translate. You probably want to copy the text from the um, uh, Indonesian Wikipedia article. Anyway, um, and a similar thing can be done for um, a lot of the other languages to find out what's actually happening. Oh, that, that has come up, that's great. Um, yeah, it's a long way down, um, but 
I think searching for Creative Commons might bring it up and bring up the relevant section. Um, there are a few press releases that were put out at the time as well that um, can be used as a source. The same process. I'm, not, I'm not seeing anything, but I do. I I want to be mindful of the time here, so maybe okay. this can be something we can follow up offline. Right. So what I um, you know, put forward is the the idea of actually looking at those uh, translations of the articles like Creative Commons and um, Open Education Resources to see what is actually happening in some of the, the smaller countries. Um, uh, for example, we do have a Korean translation there and a Japanese translation, um, also a Chinese one. So there are some places where um, they've got very different educational uh, frameworks that have um, got different cultures as well. So their articles will have some very interesting con uh, content that can be uh, translated into English and, uh, and added to our articles. So I'll wrap up there and um, thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you very much for uh, a fascinating view into how open educational resources are, are viewed in a part of the world that maybe many of us are not familiar with. Um, so our final panelist today uh, is from Creative Commons. So this is a, a nice uh, transition you've provided us with by talking about the Creative Commons affiliate network. Uh, Billy Menke, uh, and I please correct me if I'm uh, mangling your name, Billy. I don't know that I've ever said your last name out loud. <laughs> um, is uh, he's he's working for Creative Commons. He specifically joined Creative Commons uh, to work on the U.S. Department of Labor's uh, TAA CCCT grant, uh, which is <laughs> quite a mouthful as an acronym. But it's essentially it's a it's a major program to fund. Uh, the development of resources that will serve community colleges in the United States. Uh, and there was a provision uh, requiring that all resources developed under this program, uh, which can be community college systems, can apply for uh, a good deal of grant money from the federal government. And all of the educational resources that they produce need to be released under a free license. So uh, Billy has been working with Creative Commons to support the many, many community college systems around the country that are suddenly needing to get up to speed on how do open educational resources work and how to incorporate that uh, into, their, into their work. Uh, Billy also has been uh, working alongside us on the School of Open, which uh, if you're not aware, the School of Open is a recently launched component of Peer-to-Peer -peer University, which is the framework we've used to, uh, to run this course. But there are a number of other courses that launched, launched simultaneously with us in March. Uh, and Billy has been working on one on open science, and more recently, I believe, on a couple of others that may be coming up as well. So uh, Billy, please uh, tell us a little more about Creative Commons and your take on OER. Great. Thanks, Pete. Um, if you guys can hear me, go ahead and raise your hand or give me some signal. OK, that'll work. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I think we're running a little bit behind on time, so I'll, I'll keep this short and sweet. Um, I'm Billy Meinke. Uh, I work for Creative Commons on the education team. Um, I first became involved in open educational resources or open education, open source, about a year and a half ago um, when I was working at the University of Hawaii doing my master's in educational technology. And um, basically, I needed an open source project to be involved in. And the Mozilla Open Badges project uh, was looking for community volunteers to help out with community support and documentation. Um, I got involved with them and thought, this is really cool. We can actually work together and build some neat things and work on um, an open flow of credentials. And then that led me to Creative Commons, because many of these organizations, Mozilla included, um, use Creative Commons licenses. Um, and being at the University of Hawaii, uh, we do a lot of, or we did, I don't, <laughs> I don't work with them anymore so much, um, but we relied very heavily on distance education because we were a chain of islands uh, with students um, you know, that were, were taking online courses primarily. Um, there we go, Mozilla Open Badges. And uh, basically, Right now at Creative Commons, I am working on the TACT program, which is a United States Department of Labor federally funded program. 
Um, it's a very large program that it's uh, going to be producing basically one of the one of the larger pools of open educational resources. It's a four year two billion dollar grant and right now we're, we're at about the midway point and um, the first series of courses, community college courses are going to be uh, churned out, which is really exciting. And basically I work with the community colleges um, in partnership with the Carnegie Mellon Open Learning Initiative, CAST, uh, which does accessibility and universal design, and the Washington State Board of Technical and Community Colleges, um, basically to support these community colleges, these grantees, in producing all these online courses, all of which have to be licensed uh, with a CC BY license. So they all really are true OER, which is exciting. So um, pretty soon here we're going to have this new pool of resources of distance courses and hybrid courses that anybody can take and reuse for their own purposes. Um, so kind of relating back to Wikipedia and Creative Commons, uh, the Creative Commons Wikipedia page, um, I'll drop a link in there, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's neglected. It really could use some work. Um, one of the areas that I thought it could use some work is um, linking out to and describing some of the, the areas that Creative Commons does work because we work in open education but also in open science and in glam and culture and in government and policy. And I noticed that the Creative Commons Wikipedia page, um, it has kind of a hodgepodge list of a few projects that Creative Commons work uh, or work has been released under a CC license. Um, it's not really organized and um, it really could use a little beefing up. There's also no mention of the TACT program or the School of Open, both of which are producing OER, which is really exciting, really cool, and you know, some people would be interested in finding out or, or joining, uh, taking part in if they knew about it. Um, but yeah, I think what you guys are doing, what, what Pete and Sarah are doing with this uh, Wiki School of Open class is really, really cool. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up and, I guess, uh, hand the mic back over to Pete. Okay, thanks, Billy. I, well, I, um, I know you had a, a good deal more material prepared, um, and I think you got kind of the short ends there with uh, running over time a little bit. So um, let's, let's move into the Q&A section so that people can, uh, can ask some questions or share some ideas that have been prompted by this, but, uh, but let's, uh, Billy, if you have more that you want to work in uh, during the Q&A, please do. I think uh, it's, it's fascinating stuff that you're bringing up. So um, if people have questions and ideas, please start putting them in the chat window. Uh, feel free to use your microphones. We will try, if you can prompt that you have a question in the chat window, then we can call on you so we don't get a lot of people talking at once. Um, so, and I see one from EJ already. Uh, Lisa mentioned the, EJ, would you like to ask it yourself? If not, I'm going to just read it out. Okay, so Lisa mentioned the, the issue of quality in open education. Uh, what about issues of access, such as serving rural learners unaffiliated with brick and mortar universities? So Lisa, can you, uh, do you have any comments on that? Um, sure. Can people hear me? I wasn't sure yes. if I turned my mic off. Okay. Um, I know that there has been some recent work around uh, using Raspberry Pi uh, as a potential OER tool for um, low bandwidth areas or, or trying to get OER out there um, into, you know, parts of the developing world. Um, so I think this is an expanding area of interest. It's something that we've thought about in terms of access um, as we've curated OER um, on the comments has been making sure to always index things so that you can search through and tell what items are downloadable docs. Um, it's still really important to keep track of that uh, when you're trying to figure out what stuff could you bundle and, and, you know, pull into a non-digital format if you needed to do that, if you needed to 
um, put together a school on the on the fly. I mean, when I was um, prior to my position as director, I was uh, OER Commons manager and did a lot of the curation myself. And I got lots of requests from people who wanted to start schools in areas where there weren't any bandwidth. Um, and so what we do is sort of try to bootstrap stuff and um, and try to send them big files and packages of of things that could be um, converted and used in a in a you know paper format. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm I'm uh, I'm seeing a question from Lori that's being discussed a bit in the in the chat window already. Uh, but Lori has asked uh, how we can find the courses created using the tax money. Uh, and so if you're interested in that, I think um, just maybe follow along in the chat. Um, unless, really, unless you want to uh, to get into that in a little more depth, feel free to speak up. Um, so Wayne, it looks like you have a, an additional comment. Do you want to just feel free to just turn your microphone back on and, and jump right in? Oh, nothing much to say, just other than the fact that um, there was a collaborative development a couple of years back between Wiki Educator, PDF Press, and Wikipedia, which uh, developed the engine for producing uh, printed books or a collection of uh, any Wiki pages uh, to produce a, a PDF, and, um, and that's clearly a vehicle for widening access to OER for learners who may not have internet connectivity. Or where you know con uh, connectivity is exorbitantly expensive, so we certainly have the uh, technology tools, uh, you know, to widen access to print media uh, of OER, uh, you know, that is produced in, in a wiki environment. I don't, I don't know that we've uh, talked about PDF Press at all in this course, but it's, uh, this is actually a very cool feature that's woven into Wikipedia. Uh, and I've just pulled it up on screen here. Uh, it's worth exploring, uh, maybe on your own a little bit. Um, under in the left-hand navigation, there is this book creator. Uh, I believe you have to be logged in to see this uh, this feature. So uh, it it would say enable or disable book creator. And once you enable it, it adds a bar across the top that allows you to add various Wikipedia pages to build a book. And you can add, you can add a number of different different pages and you can uh, then once you've created it, you can look at your book and you can give it a title and a subtitle and I think you can even add uh, some information of your own and then either download it as a PDF or order it and have it delivered to you in a bound book. So that can be a very cool thing in, a, in an educational environment I think especially. Um, so, I, you know, a couple of things came up that uh, I, I made me think of things that our students have been working on uh, in the last week or so, and I just thought I'd make a, a brief mention here. Uh, John was talking about translating among Wikipedia articles. So um, one of our students, Kaza Links, who I don't think is with us today, uh, unless you're using a different name that I'm not recognizing, uh, actually did a translation um, let's see, I'm trying to type and talk at the same time, which is never a good idea for me. Um, he did a translation into Spanish of the English language article on open educational resources. So if you go to the, the English article, you'll see this list here, and we'll click on Espanol. And you'll see that the, the structure is very similar to what we have in the English language. Uh, he hasn't translated everything yet, but he's taken several of the sections. Um, and just to get an idea of what he's done, uh, if we look at the, the history, and I'm going to scroll back past uh, Link, he's done it in a whole lot of edits here, so I'm going to just scroll past all the different edits that he's made, and just so we can take a look at the previous version, you can see it was a much, much smaller article before, so he's really added a lot of content uh, just by as far as I understand it, basically doing a translation. I'm not, uh, I can't read Spanish very well, so I haven't taken a close look at it yet, although I intend to with the, with the assistance of Google Translate. Um, so I'm not actually entirely sure how much of his own work he's put into it and how much it's a straight translation, but this really is a, a great way to get information out to a much broader audience. Uh, and another thing that uh, I thought I'd point out is our, 
our team, and I think Clem is with us today. I'm not sure how many from the team that's working on the Open Educational Practices article uh, is in class with us today. But I just thought it might be interesting to take a quick look at this. Uh, the uh, the article itself. I don't I don't think much of anything has been done on the article itself. It's still a very short article. But if if you look at the talk page, you'll see that I think three of our students have done extensive uh, reviews of the article, uh, and also uh, Clem added a really thorough bibliography of things that could be used as sources to expand this. So the most recent comment I added at the at the bottom is just a suggestion that they should be bold and, and start working on the article. I really, I, I just think this is an excellent example of the kind of work uh, that will really prepare you to make substantial additions to, an art, to building an article. And um, if any of the rest of you are at a stage like this where you've been collecting resources and looking things up and building lists, uh, I really encourage you to just jump in and start building the article. And don't worry too much about getting it wrong or if it's sort of incomplete. and uh, that's that's really how Wikipedia can work best. Sometimes just getting something started is the thing that might stimulate other people that have it on their watch list to jump in and and lend a hand. So um, I see I've eaten up a good chunk of the rest of our time. I was hoping that that might um, be something of interest to our panelists, and you might have some thoughts about um, about those dynamics on some of the articles that you looked at. Uh, and I'm. I'm going to try to catch up on the chat here, the chat window here. Um, okay, so Peter, we're we're having a few different discussions right now. Okay. So well, Sarah, why don't you catch me up? <laughs> Jimmy, you can hear me. Okay. Well, a little bit of Q and A is going on. Uh, I'm personally <laughs> harping on a great deal of curiosity on my part as to how we can start, or rather how we can sort of continue funneling all of these great synergies towards improving OER content on Wikipedia, which is um, something that's open to all of us. And I just, I just posted our class talk page URL because I know we're, well, we're going to time out soon. And it doesn't give us much time to address this issue. I mean, we, we've collected some good resources. People have pasted in some good resources, and Lisa has added some to the Etherpad. Um, but I'm I'm curious to know what what other ways we can sort of move forward with continuing to improve these articles. Yes. Well, I think that's uh, I, I think that's a bit of an open question. Uh, in this, I, I, I think that we've been uh, I think we've been successful at bringing people with a lot of different uh, a, a really a really a lot of relevant knowledge and skills uh, into the same place here. But um, you know, it seems to me that that, there, that that we may not have been so successful in um, in in really Planning out what to do going forward. So I think I, I, I would hope that uh, that our panelists might be willing to uh, to put a couple of Wikipedia articles on their watch list and maybe participate in any discussions that um, that grow out of this class. I really think, uh, in particular, the the things that John was saying about the um, you know the, I think there's any number of articles that could be worked on around uh, OER in Indonesia. Uh, I posted on the Etherpad the article on education in Indonesia, which I think every country in the world, or, or nearly every country in the world, has an article on education. Um, and just putting something there about how open educational resources uh, are treated in that country is probably a good way to to get information out. Um, we've had yeah, a lot of I can jump in, um, Pete. It might be good to list a um, or proper list of countries and have um, members of this. Uh, this class, pick one, uh, and work with the various Creative Commons um, people that are involved. Find out who's actually um, uh, in charge of the organisation um, in that country, um, who's doing OER. Um, the Wikipedia people would be able to help find who are the 
locals who um, who also can talk English and help with the article development. Yes, I, I think those are excellent ideas. So I think as we wrap this up, um, I will be uh, sending out uh, an email, uh, as we always do between our classes. Uh, I'll make sure that we get our, our panelists copied on that email. And uh, I think I'll, I'll be putting together, gathering together some of these ideas of, uh, of what sort of low-hanging fruit for imp improving relevant content on Wikipedia is. And, uh, and hopefully, we can build some, some small impromptu teams to, uh, to make some quick improvements to Wikipedia articles. This would, of course, in, in most cases, be over and above the final project that, that you've all chosen. Uh, many of you have chosen articles that, that we have not talked about today. Um, so you know, this certainly wouldn't be a requirement for completing the course. But at the same time, I, I, I hope you'll all agree that by this point, you've developed enough of an understanding of Wikipedia that it becomes easier to do this sort of thing. Um, and I, I guess what I'd really like to close out with is the idea this is something, even as someone who's uh, done tens of thousands of edits to Wikipedia over, I don't know, seven or eight years, I still struggle with a little bit. Um, but but it's, it's worth struggling with, is that there will always be, if you're, if you're anything like me, there will always be a voice in your head that questions whether you're qualified to add something, that, that question, do I really have the complete story? Um, you know, if, if you want to work on the article about education in Indonesia, well, all I did was I heard a, you know, a five-minute presentation from this guy on Blackboard Collaborate and maybe clicked on a couple of links that he shared. Um, what if I get it wrong? Uh, and it's a legitimate concern, but it's also one that you really should not let paralyze you because there are probably a lot of people in the world that know a whole lot less about that topic than you do. And uh, just by starting to work on something, you'll be creating a space where other people might come along and uh, continue to improve and, and expand it over time. Uh, it's really how Wikipedia thrives. So I would really encourage you, uh, if anything in this session has caught your interest, um, even just to take an extra 10 or 15 minutes and work on adding something to an article that's outside of your final project and maybe put it on your watch list and see what happens over time. So we've run a little bit over the end of the hour, uh, and I do want to wrap this up. But uh, I really, I, I, I want to thank again all of our panelists. I think you all brought such fascinating ideas for us to play with. And I hope that you will uh, stay engaged with us a bit and follow along those emails and maybe some Wikipedia talk pages and maybe, uh, maybe be available to answer a couple of questions as people uh, work with the content that you've brought to us. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And for the rest of the class, we have one class session left uh, a week from today. We have a lab session uh, in about 48 hours. So any questions or ideas that you have on your final project, please bring those to the lab session. Uh, and I think we'll also do a lab session after the final class as well, because I know some people will still be probably wrapping up their assignments, uh, and that's fine. So uh, we'll, we'll have two more lab sessions. Anyway, thank you all for coming, and we will see you soon. Thank you, everybody.